Hello and welcome everyone. Today in the lab, I'm going to give you a complete UnLighthouse tutorial. By the end of this video, you will know how to use UnLighthouse to very quickly run Google PageSpeed Insights in bulk on multiple pages of a website to measure and monitor website performance. I'll cover everything from the basics of how to set up UnLighthouse to get it up and running quickly to more advanced UnLighthouse config and even using UnLighthouse CI or continuous integration features. We all know how important web page speed is now that Google is using page speed as a ranking factor and also did that study showing that sites can get 24% more traffic simply by meeting Google's recommended thresholds for core web vitals. Yet Google's widely accessible tools for measuring website speed like PageSpeed Insights and Lighthouse are severely lacking in some key areas like the ability to run it in bulk or in batch mode on many pages of an entire site or even multiple websites. Fortunately, there's a Lighthouse alternative called UnLighthouse and it solves a lot of these problems. I like UnLighthouse because it's an open source project as you can see from its GitHub page here and it uses Google's Lighthouse project at its core which is also an open source project as you can see here. But it's also not perfect and has its own set of limitations and you will see what I mean after I walk you through this UnLighthouse tutorial which starts now. To use UnLighthouse, you will need to first install a Node.js environment on your computer. It's not a hard thing to do and usually only takes a few minutes, but I'm not going to cover it in this video because there's already a lot of tutorials for how to do that out there, and it's highly dependent on what operating system you use. So just be sure to include what operating system you use in your search for how to install Node.js. Once you have Node installed, you don't even need to install the UnLighthouse package in order to run it unless you want to use the CI feature which I will go to into later in the video. Just go to the terminal and enter this command. UnLighthouse should then pop open a browser window and start showing you the results. If it doesn't pop open a browser window, automatically you can copy this URL from the terminal and paste it into your browser window to see the results. The first thing you will notice about UnLighthouse is it's really fast, maybe even too fast. I'll explain what I mean that by that in a moment. But the reason it's so fast is because it's actually running Google's Lighthouse code right on your own computer, not on a server in some unknown location somewhere. And it's running that code on as many pages of your site as it can at the same time using multiple processors on your computer. But before we go back to the results, can you do something for me really fast? Could you please like this video to let me know that it helped you test your website faster? Thank you. And if I left something out or you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will try to answer them all. Thanks again, and now back to the UnLighthouse tutorial. I want to go back to the terminal window for a second now and show you how it found all of the URLs for the site without us having to do any extra work. It does this by trying to extract them from the sitemap for you first, but if it doesn't find the sitemap, it will actually crawl the site to get the URLs. And there is plenty of configurability for how it discovers the URLs and which ones it actually tests, which I'll show you in a, show you in a moment. It gives you a very nice user interface in your browser with an image of the page when it finished loading, all the Lighthouse audit scores, and a film strip so you can visualize how the page is loading over time. One thing to note is by default, it doesn't actually test every URL it found for the site, as you can see here at the top. By default, it does dynamic sampling, where it takes a good sampling of the types of the pages on that site and tests those. So you can see from my site, it tested the categories page, a couple of different categories, the blog, a couple articles from the blog, the home page, and some others for a total of 29 different pages. This dynamic sampling is one of the ways UnLighthouse performs what the author calls useful scans to save you time in terms of how long you need to wait for results to load and your time spent going through results that are a good representation of overall per performance and issues with various page types on the site instead of having to look through every single URL every time you perform a scan. If you want to disable this behavior and test all of the pages it found, then just add this disable dynamic sampling option to the command, run it again, and it will test all of the pages. By the way, I usually delete the .unlighthouse folder it creates between test runs just to be absolutely sure it reruns the test and displays all the new results. You can even switch between light and dark modes here. If you look over here at the overview, you will see it averaged all of the performance, accessibility, best practices, and SEO scores here, but even better, as you click on each one of these, it updates the summary over here in the rows, allowing you to browse through the results for a particular audit on all of the pages it tested at once. On the SEO tab here, you can start to see really quickly why a site might be scoring lower for this audit. Along the top here, you can see that it's summarizing some of the most important SEO factors like 
whether your site is indexable, number of internal and external links on each page, the meta descriptions, and even the share image for each URL, which is the image used when the link is shared on social media. And here on the performance tab, just a ton of valuable info densely packed into one place. You have Core Web Vitals for all of the pages tested right here in these columns, also total blocking time and a ton more info about network requests for each page here. All this seems great, but I did notice a couple drawbacks in using this tool. First, you can click right on one of the scores here to actually jump right to the full Lighthouse audit for that section and scroll up and down to see that this looks almost exactly like a Lighthouse report from Google's PageSpeed Insights, which is good, but scroll all the way to the bottom and you will notice a couple things. This box shows a different, much older version of Lighthouse than what Google is using on its PageSpeed Insights Lighthouse report right now, which is something that is going to affect all of the audits. And these results are for mobile, which you can see here, and obviously from all of the screen captures we were looking at previously. So if you want results for desktop, you will have to use this option in the command line and rerun the whole analysis to look at desktop performance results separately, which isn't that big of a deal because most people are generally going to be focused on improving performance for mobile since Google is now mobile first, and most of what you do to improve mobile performance will improve desktop performance anyway. What is a bigger deal is if you look here at this little exclamation point next to performance. If you hover over that, UnLighthouse warns you that Lighthouse, the Google module it runs on your machine to produce these results, is running with variability and may not be accurate. This means that your performance results here are going to be more variable than what you would expect to see from Google's PageSpeed Insights performance results. And the final issue I want to point out is while this web interface is slick, what if we want to test a page with thousands of URLs and maybe import the results into a spreadsheet or something like that so we can sort and analyze the results? There are some things you can do to address all of these issues, starting with variability. If you go to the performance tab and click this link here, UnLighthouse will pop a new window and run PageSpeed Insights on Google's server, which mitigates variability somewhat according to this page here. Another way to address some of these issues is to use an UnLighthouse config file or multiple config files if you would like, which I'm going to show you how to do now. You can create a default config file called unlighthouse.config.ts in the folder where you are running the unlighthouse commands, and if the file is present, it will be used every time you run unlighthouse. One reason to create this default file is so you don't have to provide the options on the command line every time you run a scan, but also so you can access some features I don't think you can access from the command line. For example, another way to reduce variability is to add this Puppeteer Cluster Options section here in the config to limit concurrency to one so that Lighthouse only scans one page at a time instead of scanning as many as it can all at once. That's something I don't think you can control from the command line, and this will slow the scan down, but you should notice that scans run this way will be more consistent from run to run. Another way to reduce variability is to do multiple samples per page by adding this line to the scanner section. And finally, you can override the default config and even have multiple config files, such as one for desktop and one for mobile, and specify which one you want to use with this config file option and a path to the config file you want to use for a scan. One big problem we need to discuss now is the version of Lighthouse that UnLighthouse is using. Ideally, we would like to be running the same version PageSpeed Insights is using. There are two ways I have found to address this problem. First, if I go back to the terminal, you will see that UnLighthouse warned us that there is a more recent version of the tool we could be running and shows us how we can do that here. And before I try that, I'm just going to revert my config file back to uh, mobile and throttling true. And if I try this latest version, and wait just a moment here for it to get some results, it's running the latest version now, but you'll notice we have a little bit of a bug here. It didn't pop open the browser window like it used to, so that's a little bit of a hiccup with this latest version. So I'm going to have to go into the browser and paste this URL into the browser like I had talked about earlier. And now I'll go into one of the reports, and you can see we are now using a newer version, and in fact, we are using a newer version than Google is on PageSpeed Insights. Now, I think this is okay for me because it's better than using something older, and maybe it's even a little forward-looking, but this might not work for you, and I have made a mental note for myself not to spend too much time trying to fix a problem reported with one of these new audits unless I first verify it's also a problem with the version Google is using for its PageSpeed Insights. The second way of addressing the version of Lighthouse being used by UnLighthouse is to actually install the package using NPM. 
And this is a good segue into Unlighthouse CI, which can't be run unless we install the package anyway. So to install the latest version of Unlighthouse, just run npm install Unlighthouse. Now when I run npx lighthouse, it will use the latest version. But now I can also run npx unlighthouse ci. And you will see that if I use the help option for this command, there are some different features with this tool. CI stands for continuous integration, which is a development practice where developers automatically run tests after they have made a change to their website's code or content. So Unlighthouse can be incorporated into a professional developer workflow and used for CI, which is something I will not go into further here, except to point out that this feature can be used to skip the slick web interface and just put all the Lighthouse data gathered into a CSV file that can be imported into any spreadsheet software that can import a CSV file. Here is what that CSV file looks like for my site. I used this feature myself along with some shell scripts I had ChatGPT write for me to test thousands of pages on about 70 different websites. You can see I've combined all of the CSV files from those runs into a single spreadsheet here with all of the URLs tested in this column here, all of the audit scores, Core Web Vitals, and that I have been doing some formulas, conditional formatting, and sorting with Excel. I am doing this for a super exciting project I'm working on right now that hopefully will allow a person to optimize any site to achieve almost perfect PageSpeed Insight scores across the board, including mobile performance in just two steps. If you are interested in seeing the results of that project, check out this video here. If you aren't seeing a video here yet, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when that video comes out. Thanks for watching my Unlighthouse tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like the video if it was, and I will see you in the next one.